Hello and welcome to Blue Zone. In this video we're going to talk about ground targeting. The objectives. Learn ground targeting methods and why do we care? Simply because if you can't target properly you will not be able to destroy it. You can't deliver weapons to it. So where would you use it? Anytime you need to destroy a pre-planned target or anytime you want to destroy a target of opportunity. Now let's look at the types of targeting. There are the positional type, which essentially are GPS coordinates. If you watch my previous video, you've you seen how to enter those and set them up. And a marked waypoint on the fly. You're flying your plane, you fly over a area of interest, you mark the area and then you can target that area. There's also sensor de detection, like the radar, the map mode with the, uh, the, uh, the expanders, the C mode, the ground moving target mode, and we'll take a look at those in the video. There's a uh, harm, you can target with a harm and transfer the target onto your radar, transfer it to your floor, so on and so forth. There's a targeting pod, of course. You know, you can use your targeting pod and look at the a point on the ground, designate it, and fine-tune your delivery. And a combination of all three, you can uh, send it between each other. You can even use your FLIR to uh, monitor your uh, CCIP dropping uh, across to, so you can identify your target before you hit it. And finally, there's visual. There's a heads-up display. I'll show you how to target using the heads-up display. And there is also the the uh, uh, using the targeting pod in the heads-up display. And finally, using the air-to-ground ranging AGR in the heads-up display. So those are the visual modes. So let's let us first start by looking at uh, the radar and the targeting pod and the uh, features that are on it, how it works, and then we'll move on to uh, doing some targeting. So let's take a look at the uh, ground radar and see what each options are and what they're used for. So we're going to use the air to ground radar there are multiple modes. There's the map mode, which is a straight search radar, and we'll get to that one. There's also a GMT mode, which is uh, for target, moving target, ground target. And there's also a C mode, which is optimized for C targets. And there's a terrain avoidance, uh, which is uh, to fly the oil. Low, uh, low and fast and see obstacle in front of you. So we're going to focus on the first three modes and for the time being I'm going to discuss the radar in general. Now you will notice at the top here there is a, an indication that is my current heading of 326 degrees. Below you will see 327 degrees at 30 that is my bullseye reference. If you watch my bullseye video, you'll know what it's used for. And if I make this uh, DDI uh, priority by putting my TDC in the DDI, you'll notice I have some captain's bar, which I can slew over targets. Now watch what happens. When I do this, wherever my captain's bar is, is the bullseye reference. And if I look at the, below here, it says BRA 313.27. So to go to this target, I would have to change my heading to 313, and I would get to this point in 27 miles. Now at the bottom, you will see also I have my speed in knots, 274, and Mach decimal 4. And you will see also to the right, you have my altitude, which is uh, 3950. So that's the, that is standard on the radar displays. 
Now to the left you will see some kind of uh, lines here and there's a carrot on the side. That is your radar elevation. You can move your radar elevation. I don't remember the keys, you'll have to look it up. But uh, essentially you're moving the radar where it looks and making it look up further. And in fact if I go way too high then you won't see anything because you'll be uh, aiming in the sky. Just know that it's there and if you need to extra additional uh, coverage and you're not finding your target maybe raising this a little bit will help. Now on the right hand side you will see here there's a range it goes up to 80 and it goes all the way down to 5. There is a freeze function FRZ if you select this so this is useful if you want to select a target so we'll, we'll do that here. See how the target is no longer moving even though you're still traveling and you can actually select your target without having to chase it to select it. There's also a reset button and reset basically sets a setting to a default. So notice how the the gain is totally different and way up. There's a silence mode and that basically makes the ra radar silent. It stops transmitting. Additionally, you will see here uh, at the bottom that there is a fast button and what that does it gives you a faster sweep. But with faster sweep there's less, uh, less detection so there's a price to pay. You also have how wide you can you can uh, scan so you have 120 all the way down to 20. Now the data page so let's go into the data page and you'll see there's only one setting here this is the gain setting. Now notice how it's hard to pick up any target here you can diminish your gain and start getting a better let's see the targets a little bit better. Now with that being said uh, you don't want to put it too low as to not pick up any targets. The way the radar works is that the targets it currently picks up are targets uh, are most likely airports. Uh, the, it will pick up no other targets unless you add some to the scenery. So by default it only picks up runways. Uh, in the member the BRA we were seeing we were moving our our actual captain's bar around well you can turn those off, this off by pressing the BRA here and there's also a declutter which removes your your flight path flight path marker here and our horizontal uh, attitude here gets uh, removed by decluttering so now you understand the radar, the expansion mode, and we will take a look at that uh, a little bit further once I start uh, targeting. But essentially it creates some areas that you can focus in of different sizes. And you can go from one to the next. So we could look at this uh, specific target here. The XP3 is a little bit different. I know it shows the front. But what you want to be sure is that the, it will not work right in front of the aircraft. So you have to put yourself to the side of the, the aircraft before you can pick up the target. Because uh, it's based on the synthetic aperture radar. And that will only work uh, to the side, uh, by the side of the aircraft. So you now know the radar itself. Uh, one more thing I want to point out before we go to uh, something else. In the GMT that everything else here is the same. The ITL is called interleave and what it does it gives you the ground moving uh, target radar uh, uh, functionality as well as the regular uh, map sweep so you can see the other targets besides the ground moving target. And let's see you have the same same option. Let us now take a look at the FLIR and that's part of your your pod. So you must have the targeting pod installed to see the FLIR. So essentially you would just select FLIR and it would come up. Now if you look I have the diamond in here it's hard to see a little bit but uh, 
me see if I can change the color so you can see the indication. Yeah, so you can see the writing a little bit better. Uh, what I just selected is black. So it's basically uh, hot, hot is, uh, right now hot is white. And when I do this, black is, black is hot. So let's take a look at what we see in here. Uh, let's look at the top. This big cross here is called reticle. You can turn it off by unselecting it. But that will also remove the target indication once you lock it on the ground. What you're seeing here is the degrees uh, that the, uh, the floor is looking to, in this case here, 26 degrees to the left. And down here you have minus 2 degrees, it's looking down minus 2 degrees. And it's worth noting that uh, with your TDC you can as actually slow down and look around. Now, same indication as we had before in the plane, there's my speed at the bottom left and my, uh, my altitude here and R for radar altitude. So let's take a look at the, this switch here. It says TV. TV is great for daytime, but you have a light amplification LA mode. And because I have it in black here, you can't see it, but uh, let me see here. See how much brighter it is? So that's the uh, light amplification, so it's good for at night. It's totally useless in the daytime. Now let's go around the th around to the right here. So this here is an indication that it's ground stabilized and the laser is not firing. On the right here, this here would uh, basically point the uh, the flur to the velocity vector. See how it goes straight up. Okay, we'll bring it back down again. Below that you have a UFC. So that, that means upfront control. And what that is for is if you watch my, uh, my actual Buddy Lays video, this is what you would use to change the laser code to get the code that you need to laze. The next one is a gray button. So the gray button, what it does is just a gray scale so you can adjust your display. So you get a reference of the grayscale. Now at the bottom you see a DC LTR, declutter. So what it does, it removes the velocity vector. And notice it also removes extra information like your altitude, your speed, and your laser code. The LST mode, if you watch my buddy Lays, and that's uh, to listen for laser so we can track uh, somebody else's laser. Uh, the, the WHT white versus black, I've already showed you that. Now the ALG, so it's a autom automatic level uh, control, so to speak. So once you have it on, it will set the contrast and the brightness level for you. If you turned it off, you need to set it manually. So in this case here, it's not bad, so I have I can change the contrast. I can change the level. But when, or I can let the system do it for me and just select this and then it will set the levels that it thinks are best for the, uh, my environment. Now once I do this, I, have, I now have a focus and I have a zoom. Now the zoom is very useful. The focus, I haven't seen any anything fuzzy to focus with, so I'm not sure if it's functional or not. The zoom, however, is very, very useful. So if I look here, see how you can zoom? You can zoom all the way up to times two. Now, here you have a WFOV, which is wild, wide field of view. You can get closer, you get a narrow, uh, medium field of view, or you can get a narrow field of view. Now, if I, if I lock this target by designating, I'll designate here and I have this tree. I can zoom in all the way up to two. So you can see how useful the zoom can be. And then once you're, you're zoomed in, you can adjust your target to wherever you like. Don't know why we'd want to hurt that poor little tree, but. So that is the, uh, the flirt in a nutshell. So what we will do next is uh, we'll take a look at 
uh, we'll take a look at uh, targeting. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, positional target. Essentially, uh, if you've watched my video on uh, GPS coordinate, you already know how to do this. You basically select the waypoint that you want, and or you create one of your own. And the only thing you need to do is just basically designate. See where it says uh, WDSG? It's waypoint designate, and that will become your target. Now you can do this on the HSI or the SA page. They both have the same button. So in this case here, I'm going to pick, uh, let's say, waypoint 5. And I'll designate it. So now you see a diamond in the HUD indicating that this target is designated. And it's currently at 144.6 nautical miles from us. It is as simple as that. And now we're navigating to the target. So that's how you designate a target from a waypoint, whether it be a, a custom one that you create or one that you uh, choose. Now the next one I want to show you is a mark. You see the MK1 here? Now this MK1, when you press that button, it will put the GPS coordinates of where you are currently at. So see how there's an airport next to me here? I may want to come back to this uh, airport and uh, take out the runway or what have you. So I can mark the waypoint here, MK1. So now if I go look at my waypoint, you can see that I'm at uh, my mark 1, which is a waypoint one I just selected. We are moving away from it. So you could actually do the same thing here, designate and it will take you in the general area where you marked the spot. If you fly right on top of it, obviously your GPS coordinates would be far more accurate. So that, uh, that is essentially how you target from a positional standpoint with GPS coordinates. Okay, so let's look at how to use the EXP mode and the map and search radar. So we're going to target this uh, big bright dot here. So that's uh, the XP1. When you click on it, it will cover this area. So as you can see, it's fairly large. Probably much larger than we need. So we're going to go to the next one. This one uh, will be useful to center, to center our target. So let's go ahead and designate, which is the Enter button and we'll let it paint now it's a little bit hard to see but it looks like at the bottom of our square is where the target is so let's go ahead and designate that and press uh, designate again now we'll update our image and the image should be in the center. Now you can see a little bit of black here so let's go ahead and expand that further. So now as you can see that is it looks like a runway and you could in fact here redesignate to adjust and drop your your bomb dead center on that target. That's how you use the EXP mode. Now I'm using runway because they're easy to find, but you can use it to find SAMs if you know the vicinity and and so on and so forth. So that's how you use the EXP mode. Okay, so let's look for some ships. I've put some ships uh, in the water, and uh, let's take a look see if we can uh, detect them. Okay, let's see radar. I cannot see them. Let me increase the range maybe. Okay, get my elevation up here. There's some ships. So let's go and select the ships and see what we get. And I could easily just freeze here. 
and it would not move and I could uh, detect it. So now as you can see here it's uh, showing me that they are on a heading of uh, 108 and that their speed is 30 knots. So that is how you designate a ship in a, nu in a nutshell. That's how you find it with the sea radar. Next we're going to take a look at how to uh, pick up some uh, ground moving vehicles. Okay, the next item we're going to look at is the uh, ground moving targets. Let's go ahead and go into that mode. Oops, I passed it. There we go. So it works identical to the ships where you just select a target and designate. It tracks and then it tells us, for example, we're here to go in 20 miles per hour and on the heading uh, 292. And you have a nice little diamond here to show you where they're going. So they're in the weeds here. So that's how the ground moving target radar actually functions. And it's as simple as that. Of course identical to the, uh, the ship one. Okay, so we are flying towards a SAM. You can see that my arm picked up a SAM. Now, I, I said earlier in my, my explanation of what we're going to cover that uh, the systems can sometimes work together. So the arm, if I make this uh, screen, uh, the TDC, put my diamond in the left EDI, and I uncage, it does a handoff to my radar. So now if I go to my radar, and you see where I have the, uh, the actual target here, I could essentially uh, lock onto the target, put my captain's bar, lock it, and actually shoot, put bombs on it if I didn't want to destroy it with the, uh, the harm. I can also use the EXP mode. Since my cursor is already on the EXP mode, my cursor is already on the target and you could see more or I can even go to FLIR and take a look at it. So let's take a look at the FLIR and go to narrow zoom in and I'll try to zoom into two here and we're still quite far to see it but uh, we'd be able to see our target on here so that's how the systems work together for the harm Next we're going to look at the uh, targeting pod and how to uh, actually select a target. Okay, another method to target is to actually manually use the targeting pod and simply put your target on it and designate. Then use for the little tricks we've learned. And that is it. Now you now have this carrier targeted, or this uh, ship that I have uh, standing still in the water. It's as simple as that. And once you have it targeted, you can also shift your aim around as you will. You know, you can take out the island first. You know, and take care of their their leadership. And that's how you target with the targeting pod. So we're going to use the CIP to some ship formation that we're going to attack. And I want to show you how using CCIP, which I have selected, some bombs, will set up to use the CIP and it will actually show us on the floor what we're targeting with the CCIP. So I'll put my TDC to to the HUD and notice how the floor actually aligned and it shows me where my my CCIP is pointing. I'm going toward the formation here. Now 
be aware that uh, you will see cloud in there. Okay, so let's uh, start our attack. I can see the cross as it goes across the ship. We should see a ship. And that's it. That's how that it works together. So you can confirm your target before you destroy it. Okay, for the first thing for visual targeting, what we're going to do is I have my flare on my right DDI, and what we'll do is we'll put the TDC priority to the HUD. Now when I did this, if you look at the uh, my velocity vector, you'll notice that there's a small dot in the velocity vector. That means that it's now pointing wherever I designate uh, wherever my velocity vector is pointing will actually designate the target. So as we were targeting earlier I destroyed the SAM. So let's see let's see what occurs. So see if I put my I will put my velocity vector on the area where I think the target should be and designate. Once I designate, I can actually I can actually wide field, narrow field, just like we did earlier, and travel to where I want to go. And it has to be designated. And you redesignate. There we go. Designate. Narrow field. So you see how you can be pretty accurate here, and select whatever you want. Maybe there's a set. There's one that's missing here. See, I see one here. So we could easily target this remaining item from the SAM. And make his day by dropping a bomb on it. So you get it. You get the gist how to target with this here. So now let me show you something else that's cool. So now I will undesignate this time we're going to use the AGR. So I'll take the flare off and I will go to my ground radar. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to make sure my TDC is in the radar and I'll put my TDC in the HUD. Notice how it says AGR. And just like previously, I have a dot in my velocity vector. So this time, I will turn towards the, uh, the target that we were looking at. And I will point my velocity vector in the vicinity. But before I do this, let me select guns, because that's meant to work with guns. Stores. And let's select guns. Now the circle, the circle of the gunpiper is what I'm going to use to try to find targets. And you will see what it does. So you'll recall there was a piece left of the sand. So I'm going to head towards that. And see, it has picked up a target for me. It, uh, it actually automatically detects targets at this point. You can just switch to whatever you like. You can bomb it, you can do, it's a target. It's been designated for you. So you can do whatever you want. Pretty windy. Uh, 
Okay, I took care of that target. So that's how you use the AGR. So just to repeat, because it went a little bit quick here, let me undesignate the target. Basically put your TDC in the right DDI with the radar. Make sure you have guns selected. Put your TDC in the HUD. You get the AGR representation. And then you simply go towards your target and scan for target of opportunities. another target so that's how that works with the uh, AGR and obviously if, you, if I have an AGR I can look at it on FLIR as well it shows me the target I can narrow and in fact see that there's another target here now I hope this video was uh, interesting to you and it helped you with your uh, targeting if you like my video Please uh, subscribe and click like. I plan on making many more videos. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Have a great day.